According to the YouTube Kids website, it's an app made just for kids and was created to give kids a more contained environment that makes it simpler and more fun for them to explore on their own. YouTube Kids is designed to be a safer online experience for kids, a safer and simpler place for kids to explore their interests through online video. The website states, we work hard to keep videos on YouTube kids family friendly and use a mix of automated filters built by our engineering teams, human review, and feedback from parents to protect our community. This all sounds pretty good on paper, until you realize how YouTube defines the word safe and YouTube's view of what it means to protect our community. It turns out that the supposedly safe content that YouTube recommends to kids is not at all safe. Today we're talking about YouTube Kids. I'm actually just gonna read his thread to you guys and then I'll jump into what I found, some of the comments, that sort of thing, but he just did a fantastic job. So he posted this, YouTube Kids is grooming children with LGBTQ plus propaganda. I made an account and what I found was disgusting. But right after he made this account for nine to 12 year olds, literally the top video, kids meet a gender non-conforming person. Hi, I'm Nanta. Hi, I'm Willow. Willow, nice to meet you. Do you know why we're here today? <laughs> Not really. Not really, okay. I think it has something to do with like gender non-binary. Or non-conforming. Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah, so gender non-conforming and non-binary. Even without doing anything, this video is immediately recommended in the YouTube Kids app. Parents do not have the option to filter out LGBTQ messaging they do not want their kids to see. Clearly, there is an agenda here to indoctrinate children with this kind of messaging. Here is just one screenshot of the myriad of videos they have to inject children with LGBTQ plus programming. Why do kids need to be exposed to this? And he has four screenshots. This is why I wanted to actually use his thread because he had so much good information here. So this account, queer kids stuff, look at all of these happy non-binary week. Edutainment for all ages, it's got a lot of cool stuff going on and happy non-binary awareness week. How cool is that? What does your self-care look like? Face YouTube. Hello, everyone. We're talking all about mental health and self-care. I think those are pretty important things right now. Meet a queer kid. Oh my God, Desmond is amazing. Oh God, that's the kid that does drag. His parents have also been accused of like drugging him. Queer kid stuff. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. I am an LGBT activist slash advocate, a drag kid. The Meaning of Pride featuring drag queen Nina West. That's great. That's with Nickelodeon. It's pride, everybody! With a pride flag up high, be true to you. Happy pride, everyone! He goes on and he says, there was a seemingly endless supply of these videos. Do children really have the capacity to understand these concepts? This is not education, this is indoctrination. Welcome to Queer Kids Stuff. That's from that same channel. Uh, I'm gay, Ollie Vlog. Different is cool, so hopefully you will enjoy this. I thought it might be fun for you lot to get to know me a little better by me answering some questions. These are vlogs for children. It is never ending. One of the most prominent channels on YouTube Kids is Queer Kids Stuff. That is that first screenshot that we both looked at where they break down the infinite sexualities in LGBTQ plus group and then detail what each letter means. What does gay mean? B is for bisexual. Today, we're gonna talk about the B in LGBT. B stands for bisexual. Bisexual is T is for trans. T stands for trans or transgender. Ooh, that's a cool new word. Definitely, Teddy. Let's get into it. It is okay to be gay lip sync with a drag queen. It's okay to be gay. That is a horrifying image. That is horrifying. That's like scarier than a weird clown when I was younger. It's extremely disturbing that YouTube and the culture have reached a point where the LGBTQ agenda is considered completely safe for families and children, when it should be obvious that a large percentage of the population, including Christians, believe what God has clearly revealed in the Bible concerning human sexuality. Clearly. The YouTube Kids app is not designed to make all parents feel safe about letting their children use this app, but rather its goal is to communicate an agenda, to teach kids that the LGBTQ agenda is good and right. Christian parents should be extremely concerned about just how hard elites in the culture are working to indoctrinate children against their wishes. 
They put LGBTQ2 on the bill there in Canada because there is an inexorable link between critical theory, critical race theory, and queer theory, uh, and sexual identity, Marxism. And it's really becoming more and more prevalent today and more and more prevalent through our schools. So when we talk about the next generation and preparing the next generation, we're hearing a lot in schools and at school board meetings about you know critical race theory and critical theory, and that's great. But what's really more significant, I would argue, is the sexual identity Marxism through the LGBTQIA2 plus movement. The host of the show of Queer Kids is Lindsay Amare, an American LGBTQ plus activist and YouTuber. She has been recognized by GLAAD and the TED Conference and the Webby Awards for their work relating to LGBTQ education and advocacy. He posts one video here, which is just so, so weird. It's about consent. Consent is about consenting or giving permission to someone for something. Aldo goes on and he talks about that and he shows some videos. He goes on and he says, children have the right to their innocence and to be safe from exposure to sexualized content online. These videos are not child friendly and YouTube is pushing them to indoctrinate kids. This is the definition of grooming and it is disgusting YouTube. As parents, we need to not allow the elites in the culture to control what our children learn and are exposed to, but rather we need to be diligent to both protect them from unbiblical and ungodly ideologies, as well as teach them the contents of what God has revealed in the Word of God. It's getting harder and harder to do this in our culture, which seeks to pressure parents into going along with their agenda to indoctrinate children with their agenda. But we must continue fighting and never let down our guard. I think the thing that distresses me most is the war on children. This culture is weaponized to destroy children. It's systematically designed to do that. It is likely that the child will be sent to a public school and come under the influence of those whose agenda is anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Scripture. And as you know, our country, the politicians who lead it, are making laws that are devastating to children under the pressure of sexual freedom, homosexuality, transgenderism. The desire is to make that normal and to punish people people who speak against it with laws in the category of hate speech. It's certainly not just YouTube that is propagating an agenda that is destroying countless children around the world. There is a coordinated effort amongst essentially all of the most powerful corporations to do this same thing. Music producers, movie makers, social media providers, big tech, you name it. They literally pump out things that destroy children. Children are under a relentless assault by all the forces of evil, and they are defenseless. And we have a society and a culture that wants to make sure that these who are pumping out this destruction are free to keep doing it without restraint. As Christians, it's our duty and responsibility to protect our children and to teach and train them according to God's revealed word, no matter how difficult this becomes in our culture and no matter how powerful forces oppose us. The leaders, the immoral people that are engaged in this massive assault on children are going to have to answer to God and that day will come. But what about us? We're going to have to answer to him, too, for the little ones he gives us. When they arrive, they're his. And our life commitment is to make sure that as they grow and we influence them, they come to faith in Christ, right? That's raising your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Our fervent prayer is that our children will be protected and will follow the faith of their parents. May we all pray along the same lines of what Pastor John MacArthur prays for parents and children here. Let's pray. We, we embrace that responsibility, that duty, that privilege, that opportunity of raising these precious little ones that are given to us. Oh, Lord, how I pray that you'll give parents wisdom, that you'll give them grace, that you'll help them to focus their whole lives on passing righteousness to those precious little ones who belong to you. They're yours. You put them in our hands to steward, to raise in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, as Scripture says. We think about all the children that are here in these families gathered today and probably a thousand of them all over this campus and more tonight. Lord, give wisdom to their parents. May this whole church embrace them and love them and show them what it is to love you. 
raise a generation who don't do what's right in their own eyes, but who do what's right in your eyes. That's our prayer in the Savior's name and for his glory. Amen. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you'd like this video, hitting the subscribe button helps this channel reach more people with the truth. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement. Thank you.